Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at how I made this thin red and blue line coat rack. Then I'm going to be donating for a silent auction for a fundraiser that my wife is putting on for a local nonprofit organization that helps support police and firefighters and helps out with their mental health. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at how I did this. So first things first, we're just going to plane the boards to size and make sure we have a uniform width. Now I'm going to set the fence up for my stripes. I want one inch and now I'm going to rip these uh, boards. I've got the red oak and white oak that I'm going to use. The red oak is going to be for the red stripes and the white oak is going to be for the white stripes and for the red and blue stripe. So now I'm just going to throw them in the clamps and just take a block plane and plane down the surfaces of the stripes here. And then just a general rough sanding. So I decided to, to burn the red stripes and the union. I wanted to try this out. I've never done this before and instead of staining I just wanted to, to try and burn them. I probably don't have the best uh, gear here uh, but I've never done it before. I wanted to see if I actually like it before I spend any money on anything else and it seemed to work. I was having an issue with the wind here so it kept kind of messing with me a little bit. Also learning how to record and work at the same time so I had to angle that so the camera could see. Now back inside I'm just going to spray this down with some water and since I'm using a water-based stain and finish I am going to just spray it down, it's going to raise the grain, and I think it ended up giving it an interesting look. So I did that with the white stripes also, and now I am doing the red and blue stripe here. So I've got some Merlot dye stain. I've never used dye stain before. Um, the Merlot went on pretty well. I wasn't sure what to expect, and, you know, like I said, the Merlot's going on pretty well. I guess, you know, that's the firefighter side, so it makes it, you know, easier to deal with than the blue side. Uh, the blue side here is it wasn't really penetrating as well as I thought so I'm kind of messing around with a little little bit here as you see and every time I try and you know wipe it on it's just pulling more off so kind of messing around with it and you'll see I just kind of use my finger here and kind of cover it. I do a couple coats of both the, the Merlot and the blue. Now time for glue up. I'm just going to spread some glue on there and then I've got my disposable um, brush that I'm using. Make sure that the entire surface is coated. And I did cut these down longer than I wanted. Um, I'll cut it down here in a little bit, but now I'm just going to wipe off the excess. While that is drying, I'm going to cut my union down to its final size measure you know three times four times or whatever cut once so I've got the the burn side down and now I have I've got this template here that these stars we got on Amazon just fit perfectly into that template so now I'm just using a pipette and dropping some uh, wood glued into the holes and adding the stars in there And a nice little fade here and I'm going to take the glue off or take the tape off and you know make sure that uh, all of the stars are staying there that one wanted to stick a little bit I'm just going to put some weight on there and 
let that sit overnight. And there it is. So now I'm pulling the stripes out of the out of the clamps. And I think if I, if I do this again, I'll probably do this in a different um, order. But now I'm cutting my stripes down to final length. Once again, measure three times, four times, and cut. Since I'm not concerned about any weight or anything um, pushing up on this or anything like that, I'm just doing a simple glue, you know, edge to edge kind of thing. And I was glad that I had these measured right so I didn't have to really uh, plane anything down or anything got the heavy-duty clamp and now I'm gonna rip the um, the edges for the frame while I'm waiting for the all that stuff to to dry same thing I'm gonna do a rough sanding on this and I've cut these just like the the stripes and everything I've cut these long but I ripped them down to size and I'm same thing as I did with the stripes. I'm just spraying some water on there. It lets the, the uh, fibers of the wood rise. And then I do a final stain on or a final sanding on that before I stain. My glue up is ready. So I'm going to take my clamps off. And there's the flag portion. Now I'm cutting my, frame down to size and I'm using a hand saw because why not So I'm measuring the thickness of my flag there because I'm concerned about the pole that's going to be pulling onto the, the hooks for the coat rack. So instead of just doing a simple glue up, I don't want it to you know pull on just the glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm measuring for some dowels. I've got some 3 8 inch dowels and I'm going to go straight through that bottom frame I'm going to go into the flag and then into the bottom piece that's going to be holding the coat, the hooks on. So right now I'm drilling straight through that bottom frame piece and then I'm going to use that essentially as a template. So now I'm just measuring to see how deep I want to go into the flag. I'm going to do my uh, blue banners tape to mark off my depth. I'm going to drill straight through that bottom uh, piece of the frame right into the flag and then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to turn it around here and I'm going to drill the opposite direction into that bottom piece that's going to eventually hold the, the hooks on. Putting everything in the clamps to make sure everything's kind of held secure before I um, mark and cut my edge pieces there. Now I'm just kind of rounding over all of the, you know, the corner pieces that somebody might catch a, catch a head on or, you know, something like that. It's not fun to, you know, cut your head on the sharp corner. So uh, I eventually just take this over to the, um, the sander, the belt sander and sand it down that way. And now just putting some blue painters tape on any surface that I want to glue because I don't want to have any stain or finish on anything that I want to glue. So I'm just going to make sure that all that's covered so I can have wood to wood when I go for my final glue up. I'm using General Finishes uh, water-based espresso stain here. I really like this uh, stain and I've used it a few times. I really like the way that it looks. You just can't use it on exterior because it's water-based, but you know, like I said, it, I like the final product. 
I'm going to put a, you know, couple coats on here. I'm not going to show you guys the full process, but you know, let let it dry, put another coat on. I do have some wax paper down there just so it doesn't stick to my table. You'll thank yourself later for doing that. And just using the spray gun and just spraying on some water-based finish. I'm using the satin finish here. Same thing with the, the frame. And now those are my 3 8 inch dowels that uh, cut cut down from a longer, uh, just a long dowel, and I rounded them over on the belt sander. Just making sure everything's going to fit before I do my glue up. And when you do this, make sure you get um, into those holes. I'm using that um, disposable brush, so I'm just using that. Uh, I kind of get some tips from the Wood Whisperer, and he uses a um, toothpick to get into all the wood in, or the wood glue into the holes there. Just making sure that all of those surfaces are nice and glued without getting anything onto the finished pieces. And that top of the frame I'm just going to glue up. I'm not concerned too much about anything putting too much pressure on there. And you did see me that I measured to make sure that that was evenly distributed across the top. A whole bunch of clamps to hold it in. And I just kind of did some even clamping pressure just to make sure that those dowels went into the top and bottom all the way through. And I'm just going to use a brad nailer here to nail up the... the sides leave it overnight and come and check my check my work and make sure it's up to par now I'm measuring the uh, hangers on the back uh, like I said, I would probably do this at a, in a different order. Uh, historically, I've used a router to set those in, but um, I didn't want to run the guide for the router on the finished edges there. So now I'm just using a drill, just to get a little bit, a uh, little depth into those, so I can, you know, recess them into the into the flag there. And I'm just going to clean it up and use a chisel just to make sure that I've got everything nice and um, chiseled away. Just get it all cleaned up. And then you're going to see I'm measuring the inside here because I've got my um, wall anchor screws that I'm using to measure it with. Since those are going to have to go into the flag a little bit more, you know, when whoever is hanging it. I want to make sure that th those are cut away. Once again, I'm using my blue painter's tape to mark my depth. I don't want to drill through the flag. That would be a lot of uh, wasted effort. And just putting a little bit of glue onto my screws just to make sure, you know, if people pulling on the coat rack that it's not going to pull, um, pull those screws loose or anything like that. I've got all of my hooks here that I've I'm laying out. I wanted to do the first one, make sure that everything worked out the way that I wanted. Now I'm just going to do my the rest of the the drilling and put my all my screws in here. And a final little clean up here. And you are going to see what I see. Uh, I did leave a little bit of sawdust on there. I went in and cleaned that up afterwards. Don't worry. So there's the final product. I really like putting this one together. So hopefully I can do more of these in the future. But uh, yeah, thanks for checking out the video. And you can always go to thefightwithdepression.com and see what else we're up to. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.